Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. Thank you, mighty King. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Father, grant me utterance. Grant every one of us an understanding heart. Let only you be heard. Let only you be seen. Let only you be exalted. Let them see only you and hear only you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please have your wonderful seats. Sit like a king and a queen that you are. Praise the Lord Jesus. Welcome to Watchtower Prayer Network. Can you celebrate Jesus? Praise the Lord Jesus. I'm seeing some people. I was praying for that sister, I think, two days ago. And I'm seeing her in church now. I was praying for you two days ago, just in prayer. And your picture came to my mind. I just had to pray, I think, about 10 minutes or so. Some of the things we... Some of the things, by the mercies of God, that God is bringing out from this our small mouth is like I always tell you some of the things we preach is it hurts us too but we can't do anything but to say the truth if the Lord has sent us to preach whatever we feel like preaching we will preach and teach whatever we feel like preaching and we will teach that which will gladden your heart so that we will be more many but at the end of the day we have to have this at heart that we are not called to be a man pleaser we are called to be christ pleaser that whatever message we will preach will be a message that will bring forth glory to the name of the father i watched a short video which i was supposed to upload on my page but for some reasons i have not uploaded it but maybe i will do that today or tomorrow and i i watched these little children God used them. I know it's scripted for them to say it, but they made vital point that were very powerful. And one of them asked the other person a question. He said, That man is not anointed because he doesn't have many persons. I'm just paraphrasing how they said it. So maybe when you are played online, you can watch it. And then the other boy said something. He said that they can be in the church where there are 500 people in that church and only 40 are for God. And then you can see a church where there are just 10 people. And the whole ten are for God. And I want you to have this in mind. Not every one of us are called to have thousands or to oversee thousands. And that is not, a, that is not an excuse for you not to push yourself to the very best that God has for you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Not every one of you will drive 50 cars. Not every one of you will drive 20 cars. Let me bring you to the area where you will like to understand. Not every one of you will become a billionaire. But if there's something God can guarantee you is that you'll be content in following him. That whatever you need, he will provide. He will provide your need. Your need. Whatever you need, he will provide for you remember jesus christ died on the cross of calvary he him coming to this earth was as a result of a problem of sin not a problem of you not having money but a problem of sin and we must understand this i traveled to my village yesterday i needed to also make some research i needed to ask some questions and I, there was a man that told me a story when i was much 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 younger it's an elderly man i think as of then he was i think he was about maybe 50 something or there about then and this man told me a story about the, the the war that took place then so i had to now that i've come off of certain age i had to go and find him and luckily for me i met with this man and i asked him some question and he began to tell me some stories and now this has nothing to do with my teaching today but this is going to probably help you and enlighten you and i began to as i said sir i said is it true that you people now want us to go back to the ways of our father he said who is saying that 
I said, well, that is what is happening. Everybody now is going back to the ways of their father. And this man began to explain to me a lot of things. He said, those that are saying this don't understand. And it is mainly the youths that are pioneering this movement. And many of the youth that are pioneering such movement are jobless. Many of them. I didn't say all of them. I said many of them are jobless. And many of them have not actually taken out time. That's not my sound. And many of them have not taken out time to be able to find out the truth of the scriptures. This is basically what they hear online. So whatever they hear online is what they just move with. They don't verify. They don't go to research. They just fight it. And this man began to tell me something. He said, do you know that St. Matthew, Anglican Church? I said, yes. The one beside where I walk. He said, yes. In Nibo. He said, that place used to be more like a place where they dump corpses, dead bodies. I said, yeah. He said, yes. He said, that place used to be a place where they dump dead bodies. They just dump people that you give birth to twin. That's where they throw you. You committed a particular sacrilege in the land. That's where they throw you. They don't bury you. They just throw dumb bodies there. And if you go to that same match, beside it is a burial ground. He said, that's where they dump dead bodies. More than 500 to 1,000 bodies are dumped there. He said, when the missionaries came and they asked for a place where they can establish the church, he said, that was where they pointed to them. He said, go there. And according to this man, he said that any of our, any of our Igbo relatives, our people that enters that place, dies. Nobody enters there and come out alive. So the intention of them sending the missionaries there was so that the missionaries will actually go there and die. And then when they send them there, the missionaries went there and they start shifting some of the dead bodies, smelling place, stinking place. It was, is it Ubuze that they call it? It was a big forest. But now you can see road there and everything. So he said they will throw them there, they will be there. He said they will stay there. And the next morning they will see them coming out from that place and they are wondering if they were humans or ghosts. And that's how they cleared that place and said they will always go with their Bible and they will start worshipping there. And that's how they built that St. Angli Anglican, St. Matthew Anglican Church there. And he said the one that they built in our village called St. Teresa was the same thing that happened. The Catholic Church there. I went there. That was the, the St. Matthew Church is just beside where I walk. And the St. Teresa is a church. Whenever I'm in the village, that's the church I think. It's a Catholic Church. So I went there too. I just sat down. I was just videoing. And he said this place now you are seeing, the same thing happened. This is where they pack dead bodies. And he began to tell me so many things that if you are given birth to and you are an albino, you'll be killed. They don't understand who you are. You give birth to the twins, twins is a danger. You be, he said they witnessed that they throw them, this is where they throw those things, that they heard all those stories. So you wonder, you find out that so many of our fathers are not involved in some of this movement that our youth are getting involved in. And he now told me, he said, Emeka, I told him he heard about what happened when I was asked to come to the I do whatever whatever he said are you aware that in this village in this particular my own village he said if there are 200 families 180 families are into idol worshiping now but it was not so before he said that early in the morning then one of my uncle now came in an elder as well and started adding to it he said early in the morning once he woke up you'll be hearing kum, 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 kum. everybody's talking to their gods a god that you have to wake with kum kum now you wouldn't know how deep the wound is if you are not careful and you don't stand strong in faith i don't pity you because i believe you have a level of knowledge to hold on to the truth but will your child have the same level of knowledge as you have because those guys that are raising this will give birth to children and they will indoctrinate the children in that way and they will send those children in school and you that your child is five years and three years when they are praying they say let him sleep he's a child that's how that boy will come back with a, a family a, a strange spirit so it calls for us to wake up this message is, you know, this is mainly for those in the southeast. I don't know if where you are, you are having similar issue. Then this message is for you. So, and this calls us to the place of study, the place of prayer, the place of understanding who we are in Christ. 
the place of understanding what who we are in christ and to know where we have been called some of you i told you i taught you something i said some of you are called in the marketplace that's where your assignment is some of you are called in the school in secondary school primary school university some of you are called in there are places where you are called you need to find out where you are called and let me tell you hold on to the find the truth and hold it find the truth and sell it not don't sell this truth but if you can buy it buy the truth you know how you buy the truth time you spend in study buying books getting sermons all those data you spend to feed yourself with the truth you are buying the truth but don't sell it don't sell it for a pizza know this truth and know it to a very strong level i heard things that that i almost started shedding tears there <laughs> and i now say i said but they said that we that, that the white man didn't do anything for us so we saying that and they did many good things now i'm not trying to whine the white man. i'm talking about the missionaries there. i'm not talking about those that slave trade no 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 if you are in the southeast know this truth and let me tell you now when you, the man even told me something he said that many of our young boys that when you meet them they bring this calabash something and then they put cola there that that's how they use now you know in my in my village the tradition is that if you come you bring you split to bring cola not that's how it is but now they have that calabash now they're using and nuzu that they use some of them in their compound you see that white stuff now um, those people doing it don't know what they are doing that's the funny that's the most annoying thing that they don't even know what they are doing and you know the people that will suffer for these things that these people are doing if jesus tarries is their children that will suffer for what they are doing that's just the most annoying thing that the ones that are doing it will end up they will just escape it and die unnecessarily and the children will wake up carrying unnecessary load they don't know where it came from let me share this before i preach Oh, goes in MMR. I met two young boys in my village some days ago. I caught them. I said, "See, I said, listen, listen to what I'm telling you." Oh, Jesus! These people are. Oh my God, my God! You, you know, I preach with sound. It's better I should not start with sound. Uh -huh. I met these two young boys. I told them something. I said, "Are you aware that in our village?" I don't know if I'm exposing my village too much, but it's true now. Go and find your own village. You go see your own problem for your village. I can't come to your village and study your village. I have to study my own. I said, do you know that in our village here, that when you get to the age of 29, 30, majority of the youth will end up becoming useless. Those that travel out of the state, or out, yeah, out of the state, not out of the country, those that travel out of the state or out of the village, when they get to 33, 34, when they come back, they don't travel back again. They stay in the village. Check your village. When was the last time you saw a young boy that is doing something very legit that built a house? Uh -huh. Oh, you are thinking now, you now, you are now remembering. Oh, this is true. You find out that most of those fine, fine houses you are seeing in your village, they are strangers that came to build them. Most of them are not indigenous of that land. Let me stop here. Praise the Lord Jesus. Let me allow you so that when you understand, when you go and study the route where you are coming from, it will give you strong leverage to know why you must stand in this truth of the gospel. Praise the Lord Jesus. Remember, you are now in Christ. Whatever that happens in life cannot have an effect on you. But in Christ means to know the truth of Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus. Give me Mark 4.26. My, my teaching today will be on one of the challenges that believers have in the place of finances. But before I do that, I have to touch one or two scriptures. Give me Mark 4.26 verse 29. The kingdom and his ways of increase and rewards. The kingdom and his ways of increase and reward. I just want to touch on that topic. The last topic I'll touch about will be on that financial stuff. 
the kingdom and his ways of increase and reward. Mark 4, 26, he says something. He said, he also, lower a little bit, brother. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scattered seed on the ground. Next verse. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. Now, we're still going to come back to the scripture, but let's just read it. Uh, next verse. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First, the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel is, the, is in the head. Next verse. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the cycle to it because the harvest has come. Now, go back to that verse 26. Let me show you something. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like this. A man scatters seed. He said, a man scatters seed. Now, I'm not going to explain this parable. I will do it like Jesus will always do. He will speak in parable, then explain it to his disciples. So in Bible study, we will now explain it. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. So let's scatter it. But let me bring, I want to bring something to you. I want to use this parable to tell you a story that is going to help you. He said, and he said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters the seed to the ground. In most cases, you see people scatter. Now, we know that in truth, the man here is, can be the father. Scattering of the seed can be scattering of the word of the Lord. That is basically what it translates to mean. But I'm trying to use this in a different context. Without actually affecting what this thing is saying. But let me use a different context. When we scatter our seed, the word of the Lord, in different places, when we preach the gospel to different people and post it on social media, go for evangelism, do everything, live a life of Christ. Now remember, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, um, I need to explain this thing to you now. Bearing fruit is different from the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit talks about within bearing fruit talks about outside you know what i'm saying if you don't have the fruit of the spirit you can't bear good fruits making disciples of yourselves is bearing fruit for the kingdom for any branch of mine that does not bear fruit will be cut out he was not talking about just the fruit of the spirit that is within gentleness passion those ones are cultivated within but the bearing of the fruit is as a result of the fruit of the spirit inside of you if you don't have the fruit of the spirit inside of you you can't bear fruit outside because you are a corrupted seed you can't bear good fruits you might bear fruit but it will not be a good fruit it's like when i was doing it i was telling them that the bible talks if you read the bible and you talk to the bible it replies back there is no time you read the bible without the bible talking back to you the bible always talks back to you if you come to the bible with questions in your heart the bible see there are about three ways the bible talks one of them is that why you are reading it and you are in a place where you are confused and you begin to ask questions you say lord uh, why is adam doing this or why is john saying this the one thing the bible can do is for the bible to either keep quiet the spirit of god is to either keep quiet and wait when you get to the next verse you see the explanation of the previous you are reading or the next thing he will do is that he will bring out verses in your heart. He will bring out other verses in the scripture that can explain what you are reading. Sometimes he will tell you the story. You can use the story of Abraham to explain a particular contents in the Bible. And sometimes you can use an experience of what you are going through to explain what the Bible is saying. And in another case, what he will do is that he will refer you to somebody. He will say, chat this man of God and ask him this question. All of a sudden, you bring your WhatsApp and you chat the man of God. You say, ah, sir, um, I'm reading this, but I don't understand. And the man throws like, now, it's not like the answer was not within you. The answer was within you, but you are not quiet enough to hear the answer. So he will make reference to another man, a person that can be able to instruct you rightly. So the scriptures talk. You don't believe me. They, they don't believe me, so let me preach to you. Maybe you will believe me. I mean, so, like I was saying, the scripture has a voice. When they believe, I will know they believe. Are you ready for this thing? Are you believing what I'm saying? The scripture has a voice. And you need to hear the voice of the scripture. He, whenever you ask question, he replies you back. He's a must. He's a must. 
In fact, in some cases while you are reading, sometimes the scripture will advise you, just close the Bible and wait small. Have you experienced that before? You say, you have experienced it? You say, just close it and wait. Then you now close it and wait small. You say, come back. You now open it. You say, ah! <laughs> now, if you ask me why he does that, I can't even explain why. Now, I'm not saying close and go and watch film. That's not, that, that's not the Holy Ghost. That is your flesh. The one that will say close and wait, and then he opens back. So you see that this man was scattering seeds. So you can scatter the seeds. And in most cases, he's saying that you don't, you don't know how it grows. But there will be a growth. Every seed that you cast out will produce a seed. Will produce a tree or produce a something. Every seed you cast out there is important. And the funny thing is that you're not the one to give it growth. You're not the one to record the growth. Can you see? He said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Next verse, please. Night and day can stand for seasons. Seasons. Whatever, when, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. Every seed we cast out there is important. So if you cast a bad seed, be sure you will reap a bad thing. So if you cast a good seed, be sure you reap a good thing. Remember, it's nearly impossible, based on scripture, it's impossible, but based on our logical understanding, let me use the word, it's nearly impossible for you to plant a bad seed and reap a good fruit from it. But based on the scripture, it's impossible. That's the reason why I'm saying that, because if you look at the context of a bad father, a bad father will most times still give birth to a good son. Is it true? It's true. So, uh, just, but we understand what, but if it's a tree, all the fruit there go, they bitter. But because of your, on your context, you start weighing parents now and saying this. So the man there in that context can be a believer. Scattering of seed can be spreading of the word of God, night and day, season after season. Sleep and get up can either be alive or not. Whether it's alive or not, whatever seed you plant out there will germinate, it will grow. And that's why the Bible, God was telling me, he says, scatter the truth. Scatter that seed. Scatter the truth everywhere. So you are a bearer of light and a witness for the kingdom of God. Which means that everywhere you find yourself, you must plant seeds. This seed is not money seed, so we know. Seeds mean that plant seed into people. You remember what I told you before? That someone is a generation or a nation. That one person can stand for a nation. And whatever seed you plant into the life of this brother, be rest assured that more than 1,000 people will benefit from this seed. I explained that to you. Maybe, in, maybe when he give birth to children, he will indoctrinate them based on the seed you have planted into his life. The people he will meet, because of the information you have given to him, that information can change him. And because he's changed, he will affect other people's life. It was one information, one seed that God planted into Abraham that is affecting all of us. One seed that God planted into Abraham. One faith that Abraham just believed God for and so many things begin to happen. One man, Noah, just believed that what he saw was true. That, that there is about to be a destruction of, the, of life on earth. Remember, it was not the earth that was destroyed. It was actually life that was destroyed. If you say earth was destroyed, then the earth will be formless and chaos. But there were still mountains. Yes, there are still mountains after Noah. Yes, there are still mountains. <laughs> Let's push a little bit. So every seed that we plant is important. Remember this thing I'm telling you. Because we are going to draw something from it in our teaching on finances. Every seed that you cast out is important. And that's why it's important that you cast out good seeds. And in order for you to cast out good seed, you must be a good, a good seed. And how do you become a good seed? By what you digest in, what you accept, what you receive in, what you study, what you pay attention to is what makes you a good seed. Now, imagine. Mm. But eventually you come to church. But eventually, okay, let, let me not use church. Let me say, you went to a club. Why would you even be doing in a club? Okay, let's assume. <laughs> uh, you're on your way going. And then you see, let me use myself and an unbeliever person that you know. So maybe someone, your neighbor that you know that smokes. 
and womanize. Now smoking is, I just want to use for you to understand, maybe womanizes a lot. When you are going and then you see me as a pastor, you see a house of a prostitute and you see me entering there. The first thing you say is, ah, Papa. Then you now begin to tell yourself, no, Papa is trying to win so. No. It's not what I think Papa is going, no. Do you know why you are telling yourself that? Because you understand the kind of seed you are expecting, you, you, are, you have been carrying your heart that Papa has. So Papa, based on the seed that is inside Papa, Papa cannot be in a prostitute place. Even if he's there, he's to win so. But if it's that your neighbor that womanizes, say, ah, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Jerry, you have, you have, ah, Jerry. See, you are not, you are not thinking that he might have a, a good seed to win soul there. You know he's going for evil. Even if he was the one going to win the solo. Why? Why was that? The seed. The seed. The seed he carries. So wherever we see you, you are expected to cast, scatter good seeds around you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hold this thing I'm teaching you. Oh yeah, Megan. Oh yeah, Now let's come to the finances I want to teach you on. Oh, this thing I'm teaching you. It will help you. Financial challenges of a believer. It is very easy to say, I shall not lack. It is very easy to confess and speak positive words. But in most cases, you will still lack. Being a believer is more than confessing positive words. You see many Christians that confess, I can never lack. They don't have a job. I can never lack. In this life, I must drive Venza. In this life, Lamborghini, I call you for it. Now, what they are calling for is not bad. It's good. They are being positive-minded. And that's very good. But the person calling for Lamborghini does not have a job, does not even plan on getting a job. I just want to help you answer your prayer. It will never come. Because even if someone dashes you the Lamborghini, you won't drive it. One side mirror can build a house probably let's say for example you now start driving the lamborghini and you now bash one side mirror how much you want to get repaired on? understand there are many christians that are believing god for house rent and yet they are owing two years house rent on their hands your house rent is 250,000. Okay, there's no house right now. 250,000. Except in a village. So let's assume now that your house rent, you're a city lady, you're a city guy, and you are in Oka here. Your house rent is 500,000. And you are calling and testing an uncle to help you with the 500,000. And yet, what you are holding on your hand is iPhone 16 and 15. And that uncle. He's holding a touchlight phone. Two of you is more poor. And you are, you are confessing positivity. My house rent must be paid. Paid in the name of Jesus. I receive it. And you are thinking of that your uncle. That one is the provider. If that uncle die, income. Follow me. These teachings will help us as believers. I might not be able to do justice well enough in this teaching when we come to the economic section of it. But that is the reason why conferences are organized. There are conferences that you need to attend. Business management conferences. These are conferences that believers must learn to attend. Your only conference you should attend should not always be Holy Ghost field come, baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, dimension, portals opening. Eh? What do you call it? 
uh, dimensions, ascendancy in the spiritual realm. That is not the only conferences to attend. You must learn to attend business conferences. Oh, you see, they don't like. Thank you for climbing. Thank you for clapping. They don't. Some of them are looking at me because they have another Holy Ghost conference to attend. I'm not saying that Holy Ghost conferences are bad. I'm not saying that all those, no. But these are not the only thing you should attend. Attend business conferences as a believer. The person teaching you might not be filled of the Holy Ghost, but he can be filled of the wisdom of the Holy Ghost without the person even knowing it's the Holy Ghost that gave it to him. There is nothing to learn from the devil, but if there is anything to learn, he is persistent. There is nothing to learn from him. But if there is anything to learn from him, he is persistent. But the reason why I don't want to say you can learn anything because even the Holy Ghost is more persistent than him. Are you listening to me? Many Christians are broke. Not be, see, there is nothing wrong with being broke. Oh. If you are broke and you lack wisdom, that is the that is the most dangerous thing about being broke. I, this teaching, you don't like it. You don't like it. Don't worry. Let's talk about potters. When you begin to pray, you are sent, and then the gate of the ebot has opened, and then the glory begin to ascend with you. That's what you want to hear. Now, now I'm talking about believers that they don't have... See, listen to what I'm saying. If you don't have a job and you have knowledge, you are still wealthy. Do you get, do you get what I'm... You don't have a job, you don't have a work but you have knowledge you are wealthy the problem is that most believers have knowledge but they don't utilize the knowledge at all that's the danger let me show you something let me show you something let's push me many christians are broke because they don't love management but the unbelievers understand management management see you see there are times you come into your life you feel the need to give it's time to give so seeds to people's life and places you must also know the voice that is of god because even the devil can even make you to give you can give and become broke you didn't hear what uh, I, see i'm not trying to say you should not help people just understand what i'm i don't know i'm trying to balance this i'm trying to balance this so you, you understand believers carry loads they should not carry because they assume god will help them carry the load god cannot help you carry a load he didn't give you you just wake up one morning now you just want to shock god you go to a school and you say i want i want to pay five people school fees and i'll do it for three years they hail you now you are now believing that since you have confessed it that god will provide for it you don't know our father. <laughs> you just keep going and be looking at you. Who sent you? Now the same mouth you used to come. Now you will still come and say, well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can be able to pay for only one. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, do you know what I'm talking about? You use your own mouth and say, oh, oh God, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Do you know why he didn't give you the load? You can carry zeal now and say this. Ah, I want oh, I want people to repent. Ah, zeal. There is so much zeal. And you as a guy, you enter into where prostitution prostitutes are in their, their quarters or maybe their headquarters. You just enter there. Repent. <laughs> they just lock the door. <laughs> may the lord give you understand them you see passion without knowledge will destroy you zeal without knowledge will kill you and this is very important for us as believers to know them i will give you scriptures 
God cannot entrust more to you when you cannot manage the little God has given to you. Notice, give me the book of John 6 verse 12. Notice that after Jesus Christ fed the thousands, he said, gather the remaining. Because Jesus understood management. In fact, there is nothing that God has ever created that is a waste. Nothing that God has ever created that is a waste. Nothing. If you check every single flower, every single thing that he has created was meant to fulfill a purpose. Either to beautify a certain thing and at the same time feed a certain thing. In fact, the, everything was for a reason. There is nothing he just created carelessly. Even these ants that you see, there is a reason, there is a purpose for them. They help for decomposition, right? Yes. Every insect, everything, that mosquito you hate, there is a reason for mosquito. If you ask me, I don't know, but there is a reason for it. <laughs> because if I go to study it, I am not going to study it. If I go to study it, I will see a purpose for it. Apart from transferring blood from one, there is a purpose for it. <laughs> there is a purpose for it. Low cut, there is a purpose for it. Everything God has created. One way or the other, there is a reason for it. We might not know the reason for all of them, but if you go into research over them, you find that there is a purpose for them. There's a particular thing they are doing. There are particular insects that feed only on them or whatever. There is always a reason why God does everything. So John 6, 12, he said, when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. God never wastes. This is one of the things that even me as a, as a minister, I'm also learning. So don't think that we are all there. Or, no, that's why you attend conference, business community too, have to attend too. Are you what I'm saying? Are you catching what I'm saying? He said, let, he said, let nothing be wasted. God does not waste things. Let's push a little forward. Number two, if you are not accountable to the little that was given to you, don't expect more. Luke 16 verse 10. Believers, you, that one room apartment, you cannot keep it clean. But you want God to give you a duplex. And I want you to understand, you might not like this, but with or without God, you can be wealthy. In fact, even before God called Abraham, Abraham was wealthy already. You think it's easy to have that kind of a slave, slaves following him? He is separated from his father's house with slaves, cattle, flocks, so many of them. Abraham was not poor when God called him. He was wealthy when God called him. And there were men that were rich even without God appearing to them. Because there is a system that God has put to in the, in the world. If you work hard, God will bless the works of your hands. In fact, if you have anything that you are doing, God will bless it. The one thing in God is that when God gives you wealth, he takes sorrow away from you. And apart from it, he will also use that wealth to prosper your soul. But the wealth of the world doesn't prosper souls. So if you are here and you came with the mindset that the reason why, you know, the reason is that many people came to Jesus because they are poor. They feel like we don't have money. Let's come to Jesus and try him. And some people have given God two years. If you don't change my life, I'll leave you. Two years. So if you, you didn't say it with your mouth, but your heart, you said two years. Why not come one year now at their church? One year go for. One year. One year. Some of you, the moment the man of God said, God is opening a door for you. Two months later, you now be a church in the name of Two years. Two. <laughs> Number three. Praise the Lord Jesus. He said, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with dishonest with much. So God will first of all trust you with a little thing, a little, a little, a little thing. That little thing might be in the place where you are working. You are hoping that one day you can have your own company, and God will entrust you with a small position. Maybe they give you the cleaning; they make you a cleaner in the office. 
or a, I don't know how they call it, Jenetoba. And then they, they give you that position. But every time you are moppy, that's how you are naked. You were towering out before. They can't give you a job. You are still towering out. But you know that's the truth. The Lord will give you a small place. Small place. It's nothing to do with, with so much joy, anger, hatredness. Just because you are clean, a small child will not match there. Come, come. Knee down and hands up. Knee down and hands up. Now, there's nothing wrong with disciplining a child. But you're not disciplining the child because you're just anger, bitterness. You are not faithful there. You go and clean someone's house, money there for table, the money shifted. You don't, you, nobody knows where the money went. And God is saying that how do you want me to establish you when you are not faithful in this little? How do you want me to lift you when you're not faithful in this little? Some people are so, are so, so, they have this kind of wickedness in their heart that even in church, they do high service. In church, you are a worker in church. The moment they, you will be sitting down pressing phone, the moment the man of God just open door, everybody's busy. <laughs> ah, good day, sir. Welcome, sir. They you now hear them praying on Morakata. It doesn't happen here, so. But the way you are smiling might be happening in some of your churches before. You will not be praying Rapato Vele Kora Mashadaga. The moment the man of God leaves, May the Lord. May the Lord. So you are not faithful in the little place that the Lord has called you. Why do you want him to give you more? No, I want to tell you that there are certain times that God withhold things from his sons, from his children. Because if that thing is given to them, it will destroy the children. But the devil doesn't mind. The devil doesn't want anything good to come your way. So the devil doesn't mind releasing more to you, even if it will ruin you. But if you are in God, he preserves you. God, above every other thing, wants the sources of your soul. Not just your material things. He wants your soul to prosper. So regardless, so when you are in Christ, there's certain thing you will cry for God to give you. Even no matter how you cry, no matter how you emotionally come before the Lord, he won't give it to you. And you see yourself working so hard for that thing to come. And then he will just keep quiet. He doesn't hate you. There is something he wants you to correct that is inside of you that you have not corrected. In some cases, in some cases, that scripture please, the scripture please. Whoever can be trusted with a very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Next verse, please. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Who will trust you with true riches? Next verse. And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? Are you seeing it? Just because they made you a caretaker, you are, you are now depressing everybody in the compound. They made you lodge president. That's how you begin to lock gate by 5 p.m. Just any person will not call you president, his enemy. Lodge president, you become president of Nigeria on top of lodge, and you are paying the same house rent with everybody. Sorry, it's not house rent, it's lodge rent, they call it. You, you they lead to God and trust. You say, God bless me. Sometimes you are saying, God bless me, God bless me. Somebody will come to you and say, Ah, sorry, um, I don't know what kind of work do you would you like to do? You say, Ah, I studied uh, management, I can manage places. You say, Okay. So do you mind if I give you maybe my car wash for you to just my, me car wash? Uh, well, it, it, let me think about it. Ha, you don't have a job. Oh. I want to think about. And you've been looking for a job for two years. <laughs> then after you now think about it, you now came and say, okay, okay. And then you, you always dress where you come. 
but you have to always make everybody walking there to know that you are a boss so i don't know why can't, can't why are you smelling okay i can't wash you i can't wash we clean dirty things we, we clean cars you are not faithful there and then you are somewhere praying that oh lord help me to expand is a good prayer that's why you can be a prayer warrior if you have bad manners and bad character god will not lift you um, people can increase the in number around you but there is no spiritual tangible lifting you will not you will not believe what i'm telling you oh i wish we i wish you know what i'm saying that little one that you have been given as a believer we must be faithful do you know now that many business people the moment you come to work with them and you 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 portray yourself as a christian they will not give you the job they will prefer to give an unbeliever a job than to give it to a christian because they believe that the one that claimed to be a christian seems to be the one that is a thief The one that is, it seems to be a Christian seems to be the one to lie. Hello, Junior. Why are you not in the office? Sorry, my beloved told me. And Junior is playing video game at home. And he's a Christian. In fact, he's, 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 his name is Samuel. Because these things we must intentionally want to make improvement on that. Give me the book of Matthew 25 verse 21, please. I want to touch this before time. Matthew 25 verse 21. His master's reply, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. Are you seeing it? You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The little that you have been given, how faithful are you? Now, you see, this is a teaching that has to help you to reflect in your heart. Just because you are a guy in a small shop, you now maltreat every single person under you. Because you are a madam, you have 25 maids. The one that raises your leg when they are sweeping. When two raise your leg, one will be sweeping it under. I want to tell you that you will lose that position. I, I, you won't like what I'm telling you. It's a matter of time. And if God wants to make it to hurt you the more, now one of the people that carry your leg will take your position. No matter the position where you find yourself, be the best you can be in that position. Give your best in that position. I was with one of my, an engineer that I was talking with. I saw how this guy is just walking. Uh -uh. You call him, you say, ah, he said, man of God, don't worry, we can handle this. Papa, 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 ah, papa, ah, I say, ah, ah. I watched him one week, two weeks, three weeks. Ah, this guy. I stood in front of him and called somebody. Pa, pa, pa. I said, oh God, that is this job you gave to somebody. Please, I need it. He said, ah, whoa, whoa. I said, give it to I have somebody that can do this job. In, right in front of him. They transferred the job to him. Right in front of him, they transferred the job. And the young man was shocked. I said, accountability. There are times you will do a particular work and say, ah, uh, we are done. No, um, I don't know if you have money to pay so we can pay workers. I'll say, ah, don't worry, we'll do it tomorrow. He will use his own money and pay the workers. And the next day, I'll see them walking again. I say, this guy has a heart of leadership. For the people that he's leading to be able to come back and still follow him and work with him, he must have a good heart. And I listen to the report of those that work with him. I said, this is your guy. They say, ah, I say, no, nobody say, our guy, they disturb you. The man, a very calm man, no, he didn't help us. I listen to their reports. Can your workers speak good of you? Can people around you speak good of you? Or are you the radio without battery in your territory? May the Lord. Anytime you come, you say, oh, no, be on, be on, be on, be on. Because they know you start. <laughs> you are an announcer, a town crier without a message. 
you have to regain yourself back the people that are working for you are you underpaying them so that you think you see there's a difference between underpaying people because there's no money but there's a difference where you're underpaying people so that you enrich yourself that's wickedness and you want god to entrust you with more life if you are i will tell you if you are in a church and you have three members be faithful to that three member god is the one that gives increase be, see take the three members as the only that take them as the only assignment if god add one thank the lord for the one he has added and take those ones as the only assignment let god give the increase praise the lord jesus give me the scripture please his master replied well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful with a few things and he said i will put you in charge of many things come and share your master's happiness to be a successful manager of god's work you must understand this i'll give you six you can find this theme six things by dr mais muro also mentioned these six things so i i just lifted it from there do you know why one of the things i love to do is that if i'm teaching if there is a place where i took something from i want you to know praise the lord jesus it helps you and you see me mention some materials that have or authors that have read their books it helps you too you can also go get the books i read so that you build more on yourself so these six things i took it from dr mize he mentioned it in one of his sermons so i picked it there and i i, I examined it and i i said this this is perfect for what i want to teach one accountability and apart from that it is perfect is one thing that i've also found in my life one is what accountability to be a successful manager you must be accountable two discipline you must be disciplined three honest you must be honest four diligent you must be what diligent five faithfulness you must be faithful six trustworthiness trust what trustworthiness you say to be a successful manager of god's work you must understand this the six of them one accountability two discipline three honesty four diligent five faithfulness six trustworthiness if you look at these six and you examine your life and there is one missing work on it these whole things work together it's not you just oh i'm if i'm just faithful i'm a faithful person i'll follow you but i'm a criminal that's not what god's talking about no 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 this whole thing will be there accountability transparency you must be accountable this is how i did this and this and this and this accountability i learned accountability from my father my biological father my father will give you one thousand naira and say help me uh, do this you just come back and bring change 800 naira you say, eh? say uh, I, I bought it uh, uh -huh. eh? oh daddy um i bought it um 100 naira i took transport um 30 naira going and coming back the person is owing me change 15 naira. it's okay i didn't know that was a training accountability to be able to account for everything that happens when you are not accountable when you don't know these gifts and this grace of accountability you will not know how your money disappears and then you think it's a witch that is appearing and taking your money have you heard something you know that sometimes when witch they appear take money <laughs> but you hear that a lot if you're not accountable money disappears um, what happened to the money we gave to you ah okay i kept it here I counted it was 100 I kept it here I just opened the drawer I I sensed that something was happening in the spirit I opened the drawer I don't see 30,000 <laughs> they will sack you you just don't know it yet just wait they are wait they are waiting for your replacement accountability second thing is discipline 
in order for you to be accountable you need to be disciplined you need to install discipline to yourself it takes discipline for any human being to be accountable the moment you stop being accountable you start stealing are you aware of that the moment you start being accountable you start stealing why should i tell this person how i spend this money why should i tell the person how i spend this money in your place of work accountability okay we made an expense the expense we made is three hundred thousand for the month how did the three hundred thousand come about um but just trust me it's three hundred thousand you know we gave four hundred thousand we get under hundred thousand the other hundred thousand i can't remember what we did with it, but i am very certain this is three hundred thousand you will lose that job just a matter of time it takes discipline to be accountable if you are accountable and you are disciplined even if you take money from that business before you before the time for reports come you will find a way to put back that money back discipline accountability number three is honesty if you don't have honesty you can have discipline and if you don't have discipline you can have accountability you must be honest I'm sorry, sir. Um, um, from the money you gave us, and I was supposed to return back 100,000, but I'm giving you 80,000. Something happened. I'm very sorry. I didn't tell you about it. I'm really, really sorry. It's unlike me. It's something, it's an emergency I needed to handle, but I'm very sorry. But I'll pay back. So I took, took 20,000 from the money. I'm very, very sorry. Uh, you can take it from my salary, or, but I will try to pay back the money. Honesty. But when you keep repeating it every single month, there's something that's happening. I think you're a thief. You're a thief. Forget the honesty. You're a criminal. Replace the honesty with criminal. Criminality. That's it. Just honesty. Let me put the T-Y. You know what I'm saying? These things are what you weigh yourself. Diligence. People can count on you. People can count on you. Can we meet you by 10? Can we meet you? Guys, we can trust you. Number five, faithfulness. You are faithful. Remember I taught you about faithful. Make sure you have friends that are faithful. They will follow you to every man. Faithful to you. They will never betray you. Faithful. The, one, of the, one of the things that makes God supreme is that God is faithful. Regardless of anything that comes, God is faithful. His faithfulness is ever sure. You can bank on God and you will always cash out. Because he's faithful. He's the bank of God never folds. When I mean bank, I don't mean like, get what I mean. You can trust on God. Number six, trustworthiness. Be a trustworthy person. People can be able to trust you. People cannot trust you if you are not faithful. It's in faithfulness that people can trust you. Praise the Lord Jesus. And these things in your prayer, in your fighting, in your giving, wherever you are, these six things should always find expression in your life. When you give your word to people, make sure you fulfill that word to people. Even if it tarries. That's why it is dangerous to tell a lady, I will marry you and not marry her. You see that word, holam. If she asks you, so what is your plan for me? And you know you are not ready for marriage, don't tell her I will marry you. Tell her, well, as we grow, we get to know one another. I know, I know, guys, I know. The lady, no gay go greet you until you tell her, you want to marry her. I understand. But be the different. Tell yourself, I'm the different. Bros, tell yourself you are different. <laughs> That's the truth. You just, a lady is fine, you like her, you just want to break all her defense. I like you. I'm serious. I want to marry you. All the defense are down. Really? Then you want to finish her. I see a future in you. A lady you just made 24 hours ago. And the lady will not have a common sense. Some of them will not have a common sense to say, you just met me. How do you see a future? So I see a future in you. I saw as you are speaking. I envision my daughter speaking like you. 
Ah, ah. She make a God. Oh, but this one, this is my speech carry anointing. See, as people just fall that side. Ah, ah. Men come and learn. Ah. Date fee, 250k. Meeting time, 2 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. <laughs> that is it. They just tell you, you know, the, the, the weakness of a man is the eyes of a man. The weakness of a woman is the ears of a woman. Tell her. She's like, oh, wow. She said, how can you? She will not joke. Like, she know what she's doing. How can you say you like me when you just met me? Now, now lie. She, they think I'm. He said, uh -uh. when you know something is yours, you don't need to wait time to. Let me not. You don't want copy copier. They will just follow. Ah. A guy is walking, walking, maybe carrying yam and doing offload. You call him for phone and say, I was just thinking of you. You go, he was not, no, you don't even enter in mind. Say, really, really? Are you sure? Can you prove it? I don't like, I don't like to explain myself. I don't like to explain. What, anytime I tell you something, I mean it. You think if I don't like it, I'll tell you I want to marry you. Now you are in the fourth relationship. The same thing will be talk. Now in okay talk. Now in Japan talk. Now you are still there now. Tell your neighbor, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Praise the Lord Jesus. So accountability, that thing is very, very important. Very, very what? Important. There's a level you walk with people. I've seen that happen. There's a level you walk with people. When you come and you say, um, I want to tell you how I spend the money. They say, no, 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 I don't need it. I trust you. Have you experienced that before? It's a level. Once you get to that level, give God the glory. Where you come to, I, I, I've entered that level several in my place of work. My uncle, I walked, to, I stayed with my uncle for almost six years old. <laughs> so we didn't just fall and happen. No. I remember when I would come and say, hey, sir, the money you say, you say, no, 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 Amy, no, it's fine. I, I trust you. Huh? Trust me. Trust is earned. It is not forced. It is earned. I'll trust you. That time you come, they say, no, 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 we trust you. But you must not abuse that privilege. Praise the Lord Jesus. Are you learning from what I'm teaching you today? The unnecessary battles Christians fight in the finances. Number one, the devil factor. This is one of the, the fights, unnecessary fights we fight. A believer is doing a business and all of a sudden for one month the believer did not sell. He said there is a devil involved. No. That is not the first thing to jump into. That's the thing. You begin to engage on unnecessary warfare. See, every business in most cases have their seasons. Remember there was a season when hand sanitizer began to sell. Hand sanitizer people don't buy. Some of our, 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 our brothers and sisters, our fathers, went into start making local hand sanitizers. I don't know why I didn't even learn how they did that, how they used to make that thing. Hand sanitizer that people used to buy for 500 naira went as high as 9,000. Now, depending on the, even the smallest one, because what? The government said that if there is any gathering where there are more than two persons or three, hand sanitizer, should, in fact, you have to put hand sanitizer at the doorpost or uh, um, washing hand stuff with tap. That one, price, rice. Nigeria trusts us now. Once there's something, I hear everybody go, go add money. Rubber, plastic rubber increasing in price. In fact, the people that were using hand sanitizer on a, they are on a deeper level. They are, they are the chairman. Those ones are people that have money. Because hand sanitizer, 9,000. But now, half a hand sanitizer. If they dash you, say you go reject them. I think I have about 30 of them, self that was given to me free. He did there. He just did there, did there. Cool lobby. I told the company that supplied, I said, when the thing was a high commodity, why not give us free? Now, nobody they buy them again. 
And I can't remember, say, oh, one of our clients is in Nibo. Oh, we give it to you free. There's a season for everything. There's, there was a season when there was, everybody was Blackberry. Blackberry. In fact, if you're not using Blackberry, you're local. I mean, it's Blackberry. It's a ping me. I think it's ping. They call it ping. It's a ping me. What's your ping number? Nobody asked for phone number. So can I get your ping number? Five one. Ba ba ba. I think you should have alphabet. Uh, see something. Everybody's pinging. Pong pong ping. There was a time it was midnight browsing. It was a season. Midnight browsing. Once it is twelve o'clock and I said now maybe hundred nine in your account, you can browse. I'm talking about call. You can browse throughout. Once it is five a.m. There was a time in order for you to use your BlackBerry phone. You don't, if you want to use the data overnight to the day, you will not off your phone. If the phone off, network will know that you are now in the day. Oh. They call it MTN hack then. There was a time midnight call was running. Now if you try, your neighbor will slap you. That disturbing me. That time, in, and that midnight call, that's one of the results of the, the Gen Z's they born now. Just take your leg and put on the wall and hold phone. Ah! You enter class, that's how you be looking like a smoker in class. <laughs> when human beings are sleeping <laughs> and witches are flying, <laughs> you're <on> call. <laughs> Instead of touching God, touching woman and man. Talk. Do you remember the nonsense you talked? God, have mercy. The moment one night I cut out from that money, you are you are gone. You are restless. Because even that time for you to get the other naira is hard. Let's come back here. The devil factor. Many Christians believe that the moment there is a problem, they don't want to check about the seasons. The moment there is a problem, they think it's the devil. You come, you come to the shop, you see shit or poop. Probably a cat just came. Sometimes you come to your shop in early in the morning to sweep it and you see a cat running out from the shop. You start praying in tongues. I don't understand. The devil factor. The fear that is the devil that is involved. And that's where many Christians fell. Instead of them examining themselves, for one month I have not sold. What is happening? Am my neighbor selling? Yes. And they're selling the same thing I'm selling? Yes. So what could be the problem? Could it be my interaction? Could it be how I speak? Could it be the premises? What could be drawing them off? We don't check that. We say the devil. For one month I have not sold. All my neighbors are selling. And that's how you start declaring midnight prayer on your shop. I take over the shop. If, I, if someone that stays in your neighborhood and see you pray that night prayer will not come to your shop. basic things we call it devil so we even go forward to say there's a foundational problem here no there are now we're not we're not saying that these things are not possible we were saying that it's not the main thing to check first you are a christian you are in christ the witch that is even trying to do that should be the one to be scared for coming to a dwelling place of a righteous man to plant evil. Have you not heard that God can put an hedge over your properties? And in some cases, when you have that devil factor, you begin to open door for the devil. Every spirit that is stopping my business from selling, I come against you. And demons are passing that. They told them that nobody should cross this area. As they are passing, I hear him say, every demon fighting me. Huh? Demon B, after you go there, he said, I no go. That guy knows I'll be anything. Ah, now Mumu in B, Mumu come around them. As you are praying, they will now shake something on the roof. Bo, 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 bo. He said, Ah, oh, the spirit of the air. Ah, Mumu I catch fire, catch fire. When the devil descends ignorance, he will come. There are some times the devil can be in oppression in a thing. You use knowledge and walk out of the devil. You come, you see where they put juju. They put ju -ju -ju -ju. and he said, Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, for my business has been expanded. And you sweep it out. The devil will know this one has something. Remember, the moment you have fear, there is a weakness somewhere there.
you work in a company they've not paid you guys salary for like two months and then you begin to enter prayer now i'm not saying you should not do i'm not saying it's something bad but you are not the only one they are owing the money if it's only your case then you understand what i mean there's a problem you see what i'm saying so there's some unnecessary warfare that we christian see so you know where we are we are in a resting place in christ that does not stop us from praying of course but have we descended some christians wrestle against unnecessary war they engage in unnecessary warfares believe me warfares are powerful but engage in the necessary ones there, there are some warfares that you enter you don't talk the warfares is just be quiet there are some warfare that is only worship that opens that door but many christians enter into it a christian goes and find a job for two times three times didn't get the job he said my foundation is fighting me i've not gotten a job no foundation is fighting you if you think i'm joking that job you are going for is about two hundred thousand. go and look for a job of fifty thousand. they will give you the job you know nobody's fighting you the position you want to enter there are other people too that want to enter even the man that wants to employ there are certain criteria he's looking for there are some places you go to do for a job the man is not looking for a christian girl he's looking for a lady he can employ and still uh, 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 uh. and when you came the glory of god on your face will not allow him so he didn't give you the job you are saying oh foundation is fighting no foundation is fighting you god is protecting you say hallelujah So we begin to engage the man has seen you you came the way you dressed you dressed decent you were covering down and you came he said sir good day sir he said please have a seat you sit down the man has descended you he cracked certain kind of rough joke you didn't smile say wow you're looking beautiful so we bless god say wow do you always dress like this you know in this our business we really like ladies to be free so i'm very comfortable in this gown sir thank you so much sir Oh, oh so why are you here i came for the position of um the cell girl wow wow are you from around here oh yes sir yes sir wow 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 ah you look like you like god though ah god has been faithful to me sir so well we'll look at it we'll look into it can you come back next time yes god is protecting you don't want you to be harassed you're not going to say oh god i've applied for two jobs no no keep going if it was easy like that everybody would be doing it keep going you meet the one that is looking for just someone like you and you walk there boy that is not that is when it has happened for like maybe 10 times 40 times uh, uh, let's pray about it and you say ask yourself where you they go now i can't can the lord lead you to go to a place and for the fact that you have casted your seed on those offices does not mean that one day they will remember to call you i've seen people that are working in the place all of a sudden they receive a call they say sorry um this 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 happened this, this happened and uh, we need you now are you available he said sorry sir i wanted to ask please how much is the pay i'm sorry he said the pay here is two hundred and something thousand and you check where you are fifty thousand you don't just quit and run out of that place so you can close your door you go and meet the director in that place in charge sir please i got a job somewhere else and i want to talk to you about it i don't want to leave immediately but I want to see if they can give me one month to train someone else that can replace me. You have wisdom. No, the next one they don't see you. You know that's how we quit in Nigeria here. Yeah? The next one they don't see you. Then they call you, you stop picking call. Then they will not, one of your colleagues in your workplace will not call you. He said, Choma, I told them a law lebound and ask my own. And we take them all labels up. Now that one, they come come report to a guy. He don't get job at that place. The day you will know that is the day that man will enter into another establishment that he has a relationship with the manager and see you walking there, he will tell the manager what you did. The manager will remove you from that business. There is a way to leave a place that if you leave, when you are after you are gone, if the, even if that man gets another job higher, he will call you. Say, sorry, there's a place where, where are you working, how much are they paying you? You say they're paying 20 dollars He said, There's a place they want to pay you 500 dollars Do you want to go there? Keep that door open. Don't shut it. Except the man is a wicked person. You can shut it. Someone that harass women or harass men. Because it's not only women that is harassed. They harass men. Men, they harass fellow men now. 
I know a boy that came to meet me. And when we were talking, he told me something. He said, there's a place he went for church. The man said, come and let him come and be assistant pastor there. He said, when he came, you know the child here? He said, the man sat him down and told him, he said, see, Oga, I did use Juju to do my own. Oh. He said, the man told him, oh, ha! He said, that's what I'm doing, they use my own. Oh. He said, see what they do, they like. They are not hiding again, no. Very soon, you see people put, bring pots. You soon hear church called Ikenga Church. <laughs> you will see what I'm telling you. Praise the Lord Jesus. So the devil factor is another problem. They are open to negative things. They, and that's how they start creating unhealthy enemies. Some believers create unhealthy enemies. Your, the other person is selling, is not a believer. You're not start looking down on him. Say, oh, my boy, we can laugh here. And we fair men. Normally, in every business, when you start a new shop, people always patronize. People always come. They will not buy. I don't know how they call those things. That's why I say I'm not the perfect person to teach you on this board. I just want to throw you light. Go for business classes. They can enter just to survey. When you have a new shop, people will always come and survey. They will not buy. They want to look at what you have. And then when they come and leave, you now start saying, ah, ah, man of God, you know, over 40 people came to my shop, nobody bought anything. This something is happening. To, nothing is happening to you. Even you as a human being, you do it. The time Roban store was open, where do you buy there? You went there, come and buy bottle water. <laughs> Some of you, holy God, I don't want to say you are wicked. You enter there and only self you take left. You should be paying for that picture you took there. In fact, this day, some of you even enter Robans or just to make videos. Okay. Um, if you have ever gone to Robans store without buying anything, just make video. Raise up your hand. Eh. Eh? So nobody. Prison, you raise up your hand. So those things are important. You need to know what is the norm in business. People can come and price a thing. Price your phone. How much are you selling it? And they don't buy it. That does not mean there is a delay in your, play, in your business. You can take a goods and go out. And don't be able to. Maybe it can be a goods of what? 3,000 naira. And you go out and you're not able to sell all. It doesn't mean there is a delay in your life. There are days you will go out and not sell anyone. It doesn't mean there is a delay in your life. Kill the mindset first. Delay is when it's so consistent. And first of all, before you check if there is a delay in your life, check your accountability, your faithfulness, and everything towards what you are doing for the Lord. Or towards how, uh, both what you are doing for the Lord and what you are doing in your business. For example, in your place of work, you need to be able to check your expenses. So we say, hey, they gave me 100,000. I don't know how the money take this up here. It's because you don't have accountability, um, uh, what they call it. You don't have it. So you just come, you spend money carelessly on your way going. You bought this one, you bought this one. You, you cannot be selling goods worth 10,000 and be wearing a shoe worth 5,000. You don't need it. You don't need it. There are some of you, once money enter your hand, once it looks big, you take your profit. I made 40,000 here. I return back to 5,000. Let me start and buy shoe. You don't know business. You don't know management. How many shoes can you wear? Some of you, the reason why you just come and buy shoes, 30 and 40, is just so that you put it at the background so you can make him videos. You don't put it. He said, I just want to advise you ladies. Why are you showing us the background? In your house, there's no other background that doesn't have shoe. I just want to advise you people in this life do what pleases you. Now, you are poor. You are broke. You are broke. Not just broke physically, but in the mind. How many of them can you wear? And then time to pay house rent. You are looking for money. Sell half of that shoe and pay your money. And pay money. Supposed to be. There are some clothes you have in your house that are not yours. Only you have gray. Dark gray. Semi dark gray. Blue dark gray. Dark dark gray. Darker than gray. White gray. Reddish gray. Is the other I love men? Gray is gray. One gray, one white, one red, one black, one white. We go cross, miss them. We don't send anybody. 
but you. So don't you see that I'm wearing red and black? It can't go with the shoes. Can't go. Can't go. Men, we don't even look at our, our legs. As prof, then now, if you see prof for one year, I don't go look in leg. Nothing concerns me concerning the leg. What do I do with the leg? Now, maybe if I want, if I want Hela, I don't, hey, God, what is she wear? You don't end there. You know what talk again. You even know the shoe why they wear. <laughs> you can't. Certain things should not be a burden. Now, I'm not saying you should not wear good shoes. You know, right? Certain things should not be a burden. Because now, very soon, we enter next year. iPhone 16 will come out. Is it 15 or 16? Which one is coming out? 16 will come out. They will just move camera one side. <laughs> you know that's what they'll be doing. Moving the camera. Two camera, three camera, one camera. That's what they have been doing. And they will bring it. And now, because of dollar price, it might be three million. Certain things are not a priority. See, learn Christians must learn to know where they are, know where they are going. And take it a step. There are some wealth you can't make at the age of 25. There are some wealth that are waiting for you at the age of 40. When you are matured to handle them. I tell you the truth. And don't just pray without working hard. And give yourself time to plan. Don't run with every idea that drops in your mind. Bam, I think it's a good idea. Don't run with it. I've been a victim of that. I've seen God has given me a vision for a particular business. I run with it. I lost seven million in that business. And when I closed it, one year later, it was one year later, God came back and told me and said, That business I told you about. God knows how I replied him. I didn't say, Oh God, why? No. I just kept quiet like I didn't know what he said. I'm still quiet. Because I know he has read my heart. Guess what? He showed you a business. You didn't wait to know for the time and the season. It has happened to me. God can show you a business now. That is not for now. It's for you to write it. But in future, that business will come in. There are some ideas God gives you that is not for you. You can share it with a friend and the friend will know how to do it. And you guys will become co-laborers or co-partners for that business then there are some he has given to you don't share it keep them till in future time there are seasons to everything you want the thing is that christians are you see you look you compare yourself with the unbelievers you see where they are and you want what they have ah uh -uh, look at mike 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 we finished school together mike is driving a car why do we always weigh the wealth and the source of a man by car? What if Mike is also sleeping in that car only? Hope you know if you go to Lagos, there are many men that have that you see them drive fine cars that their car is their house. They don't have a house. They don't have any. I'm not saying you should do anything. They, don't, they can't afford they, that in a packaging. They can't afford a house to pay a, a house rent. But they're staying there. The same thing with the, in, in Abuja. There are many people like that. I've heard stories that the whale shared one one time. He said the man was that the man told him, the man he said, Look, look at the man, the man is looking good, dressed well. And the man told him, he said, Ah, sir, as you see me like this, I'm sleeping. It's my car, I'm sleeping on. My clothes are in my boots. He said, How long have you said this man has been here for five years? He said, That's what he does is that he follows ladies. You know, because they see how he dressed, how he smells nice, how he looks good. So he tells them that he's running late to his house, that he needs a place to just chill. Some of them were even hosting for two months, three months. He said one, even hosting for one year. Yes. Because they are those ladies that are looking for who will marry them. Desperation. Comparison is a problem. Just like some ladies change location. When they, some ladies and men change location. If a man cast in this location, he changes location. If a woman cast in this location, he changes location. And goes there and tries to start something anew. Then you are not in any competition with anybody. The only competition you have is with yourself. Take it, JJ. There are some people that the doors open at the age of 25, but they die at the age of 40. There are some people that the door open at the age of 35 and they live to 80. 
And there are people they don't open at the age of 25. And they grow to 82. My timing is not your timing. That comparison is a problem. We started this business together. How is your owner selling? No. Comparison. Wait. Let God root you down first. I remember when all the women are doing tailoring. I think he has reduced every woman tailoring. They are learning how to do tailoring. Every, I think it was last year or last week. Every lady tailoring, tailoring. Now, how many of them are tailors? How many of them are first? And now I'm not saying you should not acquire skills. Get my point. It's good to acquire the skills. But how far? I remember when everybody was doing, it was makeup. Every lady is a makeup. Once you can make yourself up, you're a makeup artist. In fact, if you count in this church, maybe half of the ladies here are makeup artists. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's acquiring skill. But for the fact that another person seems to be getting more, does not mean that you are less. It might take another person one year to grow his brand. It might take you three years to grow your brand. Learn to be patient. I tell that to brothers. Brothers, you see, now you are no longer. See, when I was going to school um, in Unizike, boy, depression is high. You don't see people drive fine cars again here now. No, you don't see. There's no fine cars here again. That time it was Range Rover Sport. Everybody was a Range Rover Sport. Young guys, 2022, 20, Range Rover Sport. Depression won't kill you. Not be me. Right from beginning, a truck I did drive. I know they. Is my my wife knows cars more than me. I'm, those things would really move me. She be go carry me for where they go. Reach where they go. I drove a car. Is it four C's or three C's? Four C's or three C's? Four C's. That the car does not have AC, so I have to wind down. Rain go beat beat me and the car. I'm inside car. True life story. True life story. I was, every week I'm on mech, in mechanic. Every week I was on mechanic, mechanic, mechanic. I will be driving. See, true, God is my witness. I'm before the author of God. I will be using my hand and clean my face. Now, so I put my hand for the forces. Rain go the beat. I love the drive. Then the glass will now start looking. I don't know what they call it that time. So I have to be. Every week I did mechanic. After some time, I will come repaint the car. Just like that forces prestige. I can't repaint the car. The engine is the same year, year engine. <laughs> Pack it and wind up. Hey, I walked AC. I changed. Oh God. I, I changed more than three. Um, is it carburetor? What they call that? It's in that powers AC. Changed more than three times. No, you know what? Until one day my father said I should sell it and buy a laptop. I sold my car to buy a laptop. I sold my car to buy a laptop. A car equivalent to laptop. You mad Munaka. Forces. God will bless the soul that bought it. Yes. I now moved into a, a me and my wife car. That my car can carry only one person beside. Truck, full truck. I used to carry it. People will enter for the back when we go program. I was not in any competition with anybody. Until eventually, one day, they gave me a brand new car. Still a truck. But this one now, I can carry people. That's the calm. And me and you know they compete anything. There is a lane that has been laid down for me. If in that lane there is no Prado Jeep, none of your business. I'm not, you are, that's the thing, you fight too much. You compare yourself too much. Somebody can build a house under two months. You can build one for five years. There's no delay. Who is delaying it? You see money, you don't finish the house. You see money, you don't finish the house. Say a delay. I've been building that for four years now. There have nobody is delaying you. If you have the money, you will have finished the house. Money, no day. Take him easy. The one that built the house under six months, do you know how long he has stored the money? Others are buying land, 50 million. Go and find one of 250,000 and buy now. 
say his own is on site buy that your own inside bush one day to be on site you won't like the wisdom i'm giving you i remember when they were telling me there is a house come and buy this land yeah two million twenty million i was wondering what the guy is saying i went inside one village i don't want to call the name of the village let me just go Mbako. i went inside in Mbako, inside bush i went and got a land for four hundred thousand as i'm speaking to you one of that land is 1.5 million now who are you in competition with who are you fighting with new estate everybody's watching it hey, 2.5 million that's true but do you have the money now you don't have it go inside bush and go buy it now and stop carrying unnecessary loads some of you, you are carrying your family load on your head too much your bills oh, everybody you are carrying their load you will die yo. you will die you will be carrying you will ca oh, oh, oh. you are forming jagaban who send you carry the one you can carry yes i need all my brothers and my sisters to go to school that is beautiful you must not carry all of them at once so that you don't end up going to do what you're not supposed to do that is what has led many ladies into prostitution Some people will just relax and put burden on ladies. They re Before it is men that used to carry that load, but men have learned to carry the one they can carry. Women are still carrying every load. Sometimes they will marry and enter into marriage, carrying the load of their father's house. And that marriage was, it, most of times, when you are in a marriage, still carrying your father's load, most of the times that marriage will not last. So when the man gives you 100,000, buy this for Junior and uh, you divide the money. You send some back home. The day the man will discover that thing, eh? You might even make him to cease helping your family members. Because he will assume that all the money he has, you are sending to your family. Carry the one you can carry. I know two of you want to go to school. I can carry only one. Let me carry you. Trust, that's where you have to trust God that God can say, let me just carry all of them. God will see my heart. God is not emotionally moved. I need to talk to some people here. God is not what? Emotionally moved. So don't think when you come before the Lord, and God will say, yeah, more measure. No, God will ask you, who sent? Who sent? Trust God. Let me work on you. I will do my best to bring the best out of you. But if you feel God is the one leading you to carry all the things, carry it. He will give you grace. But don't carry the one he didn't send you. I've seen people that are depressed. I've, I, I give credit to the ladies of our time. Oh, some of them, oh, they are hard-working people. Hard-working ladies. Give all their 100% and still doing something very legit for God not living a useless life and they are carrying so many things but don't kill yourself as the first son of the family eh you know without no eh 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 carry what you can carry you see if you are climbing a a a a a, a mountain with a ladder for example you know if you carry too many loads you will never get to that top on time but if you get to that top on time you can be able to throw down rope or ladder to help others come up. And that's what leads to depression, frustration, and then it, sometimes it will take your prayer life away. There are some of you here that the moment money enters your account, it scatters, it finishes. Once you are receiving your salary, you just know that out of your salary, maybe 100,000, maybe, in fact, let me tell you, if you see where they are in Nigeria now, if you see why they are paying you 50,000, give God glory. You don't like what I'm telling you now. You won't like what I'm telling you. 50,000 salary a month. Thank God for it. Do you know? You know, you don't know that many companies fold a close bar. Last year, and this year, many companies closed though. You just don't know. I used to be in meetings. Companies will be being meetings. I, 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 information that I'm. They say 17 station closed. 10 closed in this place. In Nenugu, two has closed. 
what is happening. You think to sustain those things are easy. Whether you have product or not, end of the month you pay salary. Don't carry more than you can carry. Except the Lord is strengthening you to carry them. You know the problem, you know, in Igbo land, it is meant, it is built in a way that you as the first child, whether male or female, must carry others. That is a mindset we are built with. But sometimes it weighs us down. It weighs us down. That's why every single person must be contributing. The last born, the second born, the third, everybody must do one thing to contribute. At a tender age, get sense. If you are 18 and 19, you should have sense. Except you didn't stay with your parent. Oh. Sense. If you stay with my kind of father, you get I think African parents, 80% of them, if you stay with them, you get sense. When they don't go beat you, they use my tell you, tell you, tell you, you get sense. That's why it's good to learn skills to have it at hand. And when that burden comes upon us, we begin to blame God. Say that hey, everything is not working. God, you forget. God did not forget you. You are carrying more than you can carry. Obi He said you already. He said, "Come to me, you are weary and heavy, but let me give you my own load." He said, "My load is light." one job and you want to carry everybody do you know how much is school fees now one of the school my cousin is attending then they pay 490,000 for one person and about three of my uncle children are there I used to ask I said oh, how do they do this thing self why yeah, do they carry four hundred ninety k. now person how two years rent with that though and as some person one year rent and some people now their salary for one year so you cut it according to your size you cannot be for us i don't know i, I don't want to say attend business conferences i might not be the right person to teach you this thing the best way you can get it you cannot be earning you cannot be earning fifty thousand naira every month and believing in an apartment where you are paying six hundred thousand is a is against every financial law how much be your feeding how much is your personal upkeep how much is soap so when they finish now anyhow two three days don't finish where the soap apart from that for some of you that live in certain area rat they follow you chop the soap rat go chop one side the one how how do you cope because you want to belong, you are in a, in a house, 600,000, you did there. And your salary is 50,000, you come back home, how do you even sleep there? You are single, you are living in three rooms and what did they do you? Only you, three rooms and parlor. You want to carry your village people from family, come down. Say, no, we have to leave here, we have to leave here. No, find out what you have. You are any 50,000 naira, a house of 200,000 is okay for you. Where every year? At least you can you can even go to your company and say, I want to pay for my rent. Can you take give me one fifty thousand or two hundred thousand there? You guys should manage for my salary. It can comfort it can can carry you. You are in a house where you are paying three hundred thousand and you are any hundred thousand. It's good. The moment they increase that house rent to five hundred thousand, it's no longer good though. It, it, there is a shaking for you. And that's why you keep we keep praying. That's why people laugh at us. They say we are always praying for God. Hey, no, we are praying because we need help. But God gives you wisdom. Wisdom is also God's way of helping you. Wisdom to know what to carry. There are I, I see I see people that hustle for money. You. I don't like using the word hustle because hustle is like forcefully taking something. But I see people that work hard for money. Have you seen those boys that carry bucket to wash cars on the road? Let me tell you the truth. Work day. The team say if you do the work. I don't mean like bad work or good work day. Can you do it? For men. 
I see people that go to house to house to wash. They'll come to your house and they wash cars in the house. They'll use your own water in the house and wash cars in the house, in a tenant house. They wash the cars. If you come, they'll tell you, sir, um, outside they wash one five. They'll tell you they'll do it for 500. And there are four cars there. And as he's done washing, he's going to another person's house to go and wash. And after he's done, he goes to his work. Those are the people that if they tell you that they are hard work, you say this one labored. You, you are just your oh, hey, man. I go fall, they go fall, they go fall. Oh. You know, go fall, you know, go fall, you know, they fall like that. Too. There are people. You that you are afraid that if you are washing that car, that gear where they look, just come, you go crap your style. You, are, you don't have a style, you are stylish. You cannot be in a job where you are earning 50,000 and have a successful girlfriend. There will be nothing successful about the business of the girlfriend. Adding, business, adding girlfriend to that business is poor management. Because you don't have the maintenance fee to maintain. So they say, my, my father is not feeling fine. And they say, man, bring for the thousand. If you love me, I don't love you. <laughs> There is a, there is a, see, there are some times you want to fall in love, check your pocket and tell your pocket, you see this person, we can't fall in love now. <laughs> the way, if I don't like what I'm saying, you know you don't like truth, but say, you can't fall in love. Recharge card, 2,000, if check them now, house rent, 300,000, salary, 50,000. Maintenance fee, recharge card, but where they send. And bed day, you go buy better gift too. If the phone spoil, you go replace the phone. Who even give us those responsibilities, F? Is there anywhere in the Bible? Why will we even carry those loads? You are carrying unnecessary load. Boop, 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 Give a long way. These are the problems we are having. See, let me tell you, this is a serious problem. It's a serious problem. You know, you might not know how I'm helping you people now. You might be laughing. You don't know how I'm helping your life. You might not practice what I'm telling you, but that's for you. Me, I'm married now. All my expenses fee are natural expenses fees. What I'm meant to pay is what I'm paying. And some of you, you are a brother. You are saying you want to touch God. You have two gear friends. You, are, you don't know God. Cut it. I, I'm teaching on finances. Yeah, I, let, I don't, I'm not supposed to. I, I might not go for conferences. Let me tell you the spiritual angle of it. Go for conferences to learn the maybe more of the physical angles of it. How much is her style? Eight thousand. Now nine thousand. Uh, Fifty. How much? I don't know which hair now. Hair. Any hair. A braid. From twenty thousand. Bread for 20,000. Sister, cut the hair. <laughs> if this relationship will work, cut that. You love me too, but cut the hair. I, 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 I'm not moved by hell. <laughs> My brother, man, I'm helping you here. Oh. Women, I'm sorry, but let me help our brothers. Because every time they pressure them, I mean, Daddy, even say, I'll go wait. Sometimes some counseling, you don't need spiritual angle. Let's look at the physical angle. What and what is in your life? Burdens. And the hair, maybe part of one month, they have to change it. Now, nah, don't they feel people carry braid? Braids. So, now, nah, nah, 20k, you carry poof for head. Well, they try. See us now. Two five is gone. Some, some, if you verse, 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 one five. If you add, you add, you add, you one thousand. If you better customer, eight hundred naira. 
If you know green, shave him big. <laughs> the loads we carry at times are too much. Take this as the voice of God speaking to us. The loads we carry at times are too much. And that's why you see a man, you see a young boy at the age of 20, 25, he will sit down and be lost in thoughts. He will begin to wonder what, what mistake his father made. There is no mistake. We are carrying too much. That's how some people just go mental. And sometimes people go to smoke. They say they want to kill depression. Smoke never kills any depression. Who told you you smoke your pains away? Where do you even learn those nonsense from? Have you ever seen a person that can smoke worries away? You just shut yourself from not believing in the reality. You will still come back to that reality and face it head to head. Don't carry it. Some parents are even chasing their daughters away from the house to get married. Do you know why they are chasing them? Most of the parents can't carry the bills of their own children. At times, is what is happening. And they want you to marry so that someone else can carry the bills. It's heavy on them. If your own father, mother, they come out to you, they chase you, come out for house. Now you come to somebody and say, don't you know I'm expensive? Me chono. And I took pay in a yard in one. We learn it. Intentional. See, count it. Learn. Learn. I learned this thing at the very... Oh, I, I, God blessed me with a very wise man as an uncle. Have, I stay around elders. So they talk some things that you have to just... That's why I have access to them by God's grace. To an extent too, I also sit with my kings. My king. Very soon I'm supposed to go and meet him now. To sit with him and ask some questions. I, I'm, I'm privileged to be around wise people. And if you ask them what do you think is happening to our youth, you will hear some things. What is clean our youth? We carry unnecessary things. Depression. You want to use a Samsung phone. You want to use an iPhone. You want to use this. You're not. Wait. A time will come, you will use those things. Once upon a time, Nokia 2600 was the top reigning phone. And why it was because of bounce, that bounce game. That's why it was big, one of the biggest phones. Nowadays, nobody knows anything about Nokia. Nokia just faded out. Now it's Samsung. Now it's, there are many products out there. Praise the Lord Jesus. I don't know. I just begin to preach from my heart. There's no point of even... I'm just speak to us. So please, this is very, very important. So I want you that as you are seated, be intentional to release some of the loads in your hearts. I think one of the next programs we should host will be a conference that has to do on finances. Have to, we have to bring people that are into the business world that can teach us on finances. Not just, both our both youths. I'm teaching from the river of my own knowledge. Take it from someone that I've done business for over 15 years. Even as much as I was born in a house where business is constantly done. At the young age of 7, 10, my father took you into one thing to be doing. So I grew up in a place where this business is done. So, but I'm talking about from the age when I come to the age of accountability in business. So just learn from it. I know you will not hear what I'm telling you about the advice, but, but some of you, one of the things you some of you, one of the things you know how to do, you, you're a good teacher. Not teaching of the word I'm talking about. You, you can teach, you can learn a skill and be able to teach it very well. You can start online classes online. Yes, you might not have enough time to rest. Don't worry, when you get to the age of 40, you rest enough. But now, now, I remember when I told my wife, I said, I want to work as hard as I can so that when I get to the age of 40, 50, I can rest more. Let's cast the seeds. And one of the best investments you can make is to invest in a human being. And let me tell you, not every human being has sense but still cast because you never can tell the one that has sense the one you think has sense might not have then the one you think does not have might be the one that will remember you cast what your seeds god is casting his blessing upon all of us and yet not all of us will be chosen on the last day 
So even God is casting seeds like that. He said, don't cut. In your cutting, in your weeding now, you might weed the right seed. Wait. On the day of harvest, we will separate everyone. But it's the same nutrient that feeds all of them. The same God that gave sun to the wicked is the same God that gave sun to the righteous. The same God that sent rain to the wicked is the same God that sent rain to the righteous. Same rain for everybody. How do you utilize it matters. So we need to be able to sit down and plan our life. I tell some, there's some people I tell them, I say, meet me, let me help you. Let's plan this your life. I do it for people. We sit, that's what we do. What do you think we do in counseling? Yeah, but No, that's not what we do. If it's a demon, we cancel it. We rebuke it and cast it out. If it is something spiritual, we can give you prayers. If it is something that is just logical, we change your mindset on it. That's what counseling is for. Sometimes I spend one hour doing counseling. Brother Mike bears me witness. One hour I'm doing counseling with one person. And others are waiting. One hour. We're trying to reprogram the mind. Because if we tell you, come for a program like this, let us change your mind, you will not come. Some of you, you are gifted in writing. You will know how to write stories. Go and write stories. Sit down and write stories. I remember a book I read when I was much younger. Sugar Girl. I don't know if you have read Sugar Girl. You read Chaka de Zula. That one is more of a... a Chaka de Zula is more of a, a true life story. In a certain way. But Sugar Girl is just a story, a fairy tale. Write fairy tales. Put the touch of God in the story. Fairy tales. Bring it out. You must not even go and um, print it out. You must not do lunching. Oh, I'm lunching. Oh, God, leave lunching. You don't have the money for it. Leave that one first. And you must not bring out hard copies. Go to Amazon. It's free. Put your book there. Go online. Give to one or two persons that have influence, that are Christians and believers that love what you are doing. They will promote it for you. There are some of you, you do something, I'll, I'll call you and say, oh, this is our brother does cake or this is our sister does cake. You don't know how to utilize that thing I just, I did for you. As I held, you hold your hand, I say, oh, this person does one of the best cake and everything. You just uh, laugh and go back. You don't know how to utilize it. You go and cut that part. It's marketing for you. Sometimes you do some, that's how one of our sisters did um, samosa. And she brought it to me. She said, man of daddy, samosa I did. I didn't even know it was expensive like that. I ate, ate. it was only that I told me the price. I said, eh? Now two five will chop like this. Samosa. And now as I'm here, even my wife does samosa. Are you guys aware? She does, yeah. She does um, fish, that dry fish. She does barbecue fish. She does it too. Steamed turkey. Move rakata. She does it. There was a day she said she was going to do about 96 kind of different food. Now me chop some, but now my money here am. May the Lord give you understanding. She makes shawarma. Those are the things. If eventually she wakes up and says, okay, I want to start making um, those kind of food and everything, they'll do it. Sister Helen here did one chinchin that I, I ate. I was driving, I was telling Brother Mike how this thing. Brother Mike was, I don't even know he was, I, the way he looked at me, I have to give him the one that was remaining. So I to focus on the road where we are going on a mission to go and win. So he looked at me and looked at the chinchin. Look, he said, How do you come? I said, well, I chop one now. You don't say they call chinchin, chop one, chop two. So many chop one, my chop two. I think it was three you gave us. I chopped two in chop one, just so you know. When I went to go and order for the chinchin, I had a price. Anyone you want me to test, I'm good for testing. Praise the Lord Jesus. That's it. Some of you, one of the ideas you know how to do is to combine. I see where they, I see a young boy that sells Gary. The um, Gary sugar and the other. They sell it in that. So all you need to do is just open it. You've seen it, but just open it and pour it and pour water. And they're selling it. Hope you know Quilly Quilly now is refined now. Are you seeing Quilly Quilly refined? Quilly 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 all day. Quilly Quilly now is refined. Quilly Quilly go meet Aboki. Aboki will just give you one or 500 naira. You go plenty. Now the refined one is almost 2,000 naira. The same amount of the same taste. Who are they deceiving? Me and you. Ideas are there. Tell the stories. Go and write stories. Write about five stories. And the funny thing about life now is that you don't need to write 100 pages. 20 pages can sell. Tell stories. Tell your life 
how you grew up tell it as a story use characters to tell a story as long as it has a very good end you are gifted you thought you are not gifted you are gifted some of you you can speak fluently you know how to speak find something that can utilize those gifts now some of you you know how to read books you can read without stopping and making mistake record it there was something um, um prof taught me about um adobe, adobe podcast he will make a video and use adobe podcast and make the voice look like someone that went to studio i said wow i i learned that one go and try out things go on i'm serious about the stories some of the children now no longer have storybooks all that our children are doing now is cartoon and some of those cartoon are very demonic have you seen seven deadly sin very demonic almost all the animations are demonic disney now you see the video disney did about jesus christ that lucifer was righteous and it was god was angry with have you you watch it that god hated lucifer that's why it was lucifer wanted to think out of the bus and that's the cartoon our children were are watching you see them watching cartoon you think they are in, you, most of the cartoons now have homosexuality there yes the only best cartoon i can recommend for any child to watch is tom and jerry or maybe ben 10 right or power puff girls these are some of the cartoons that i think i can recommend but every other thing they are watching is nonsense go and write those stories and bring it out me your pastor i'm your first marketer i'll post it online for people to patronize you once i'm sure i, I read the story and there's there's you know you brought the glory of god around the story oh my god who we'll post it there all of us in the church i will share it ask god for wisdom just begin to pray say lord give me wisdom I need wisdom. Is the Lord that giveth you wisdom to make wealth? Lord, give me wisdom. I need wisdom to make wealth. Wisdom to make wealth. Wisdom to make wealth. Wisdom to make wealth. Give me the creative anointing to be creative, the creative anointing. Give me understanding. I want to give me the passion for that thing you want me to do. I know there is more. Some of you are great writers. It is time to ask God for that wisdom for writing some of you are great storytellers it is time to ask God for that grace some of you are good managers it's time to ask God for that position speak to your father is anyone among you in need of wisdom in the book of James he said let him ask our generous father and it will be given to him sometimes there is nothing like you don't need to pray those fire fire prayer you just need to ask god for wisdom give me wisdom i won't trade i need wisdom to be able to be to be able to follow you i won't trade silver no mansion wisdom i won't let it rest upon me wisdom for leadership wisdom for management wisdom to understand when i am carrying more than i can carry help me help me one of the cries i often cry is lord give me wisdom to be able to lead your people wisdom to be able to bring out the best in the people that you have entrusted me wisdom wisdom to bring out the best that these people carry they can stand in their own peculiarity and their light will shine forth yeah, yeah, yeah. 
some of you all you needed is the boldness you have been god has been telling you it is time to start that business it might even look like you're just going to go and fry a cara. it might be frying of yam you never can tell what it is but i want to tell you that there is grace that is available for all form of works you have an idea that idea will not die with you you need to bet it forth and you need the wisdom Link me to See those that will help me to achieve what you have destined for me on this earth. I won't trade you anything. More. I won't trade you ever no more. There is a light in you that the world has not seen. And the wisdom of God that will come upon you will allow that light to shine forth. Father, rest your wisdom upon us all. Rest your wisdom upon us all, Lord. Rest your wisdom upon us all. Rest your wisdom upon us all. Rest your wisdom upon us all. Rest your wisdom upon us, Lord. I receive wisdom some of you you just need that prophetic inside as you are sleeping the, the voice of the Lord will just come and rest upon you you just see an instruction will just begin to play in your heart the Lord will be saying go this way and go this way you need the foresight to know what God wants you to even invest in you need foresight speak to your father I see speak to our father receive that wisdom All I see holy spirit i'm in your hands lead me i commit my spirit and my soul and my body to you lead me the bible said you shall not lack that is true but remember you have to be a sheep to the great shepherd in order for you not to lack because it's the shepherd that will lead you into still water to the still waters you cannot say you will not lack when the true shepherd is not the one leading your life lord i receive wisdom as you are giving me wisdom give me capacity some of you it is time for that light to shine forth the grace of god is mine it's time for that light to shine forth it is time for that light to shine forth receive it receive it receive from the father receive receive from the father everywhere that I go Everything that I see, all I see is grace. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, all I see is grace. Pour that grace upon me, Lord. There is a grace that enables you to do certain things. Can you receive the grace that will enable you to do that assignment? I see grace. All I see is grace. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, all I see is grace. Great grace.
así 